I wonder if it's the title of this message which has attracted you, which has provoked curiosity in you so that you watch this video message. God loves rich people. Hmm, does he? Or does he prefer poor people? Well, God does love rich people. God loves poor people. And God loves people who are somewhere in the middle. Now, you are probably thinking that I'm talking about people being rich because they have lots of money, lots of possessions, people who own expensive goods, jewellery, cars, house, clothing. Uh, they buy things which cost a lot of money because they are able to, because they are rich in financial terms. Well, if you are thinking along those lines, well, yes, you are right, partially right. You are right in part. But there is another way to look at being rich. I am rich, not because I have lots of money or have a big house or more than one house, an expensive car or anything like that. No, I'm, I'm not rich in financial terms, but I am rich in the Lord. Let's have a look at some scripture, maybe only one passage today. And a little earlier on today, I came across this and I can't remember how I came to be looking at this, but that doesn't matter. We we'll look at this passage in scripture, which is in 1 Timothy chapter 6. The first letter of Timothy, which we have recorded in our Holy uh, scriptures or first letter of Paul to Timothy I should say. 1 Timothy chapter 6 <clears throat> and three verses towards the end of that chapter verses 17, 18 and 19. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 17, 18, 19. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or, or to be proud, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, so that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, so that they may lay hold on eternal life. Three verses which uh, mean a lot. So those who are rich are commanded not to be uh, to be proud, not to be arrogant, not to be haughty, not to think of themselves better than other people, not to trust in their riches which are uncertain. And history tells us, doesn't it, that when there is a stock market crash, when stocks and or shares suddenly plummet, they go right down all of a sudden because of some world event, maybe. We, we, we are aware that people who place their trust in their riches become very much downhearted. They become broken people. The world seems to disappear, or well, their world seems to disappear, and some of them even have taken their own lives. That's what trusting in riches can do for one. And, and riches are uncertain because, as I've just mentioned, a, a world event or even a national event or a local event can suddenly take away a person's wealth or reduce it significantly. So, and where we are living now in the year 2024, there is uncertainty in the financial sector. There is uncertainty with taxation. There is uncertainty with uh, measures which may be put into place by uh, international organisations. 
I won't go any further than that in this particular message. But what we have one day in terms of wealth, if we have it, financial wealth, can be eroded, it can be taken away. So there is no point in trusting in riches, for we do not know what tomorrow may bring. I read there in verse 17, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. And that's it. It says it all there, trust in God. Have faith in God, trust in God. Rely upon God. That's what trusting means. It means to rely upon something or someone, to, to be reliant upon something or someone. To the point of placing one's entire being in trust to that person or that thing. That is trust in its truest form. So rather than trusting, we, we may have wealth, we may have riches, but that's not where our trust lies. We have to trust in God absolutely who gives us richly all things to enjoy some people enjoy their riches they might enjoy looking at their bank balance or their bank balances maybe they have more than one bank account maybe they have a building society account or two or they have money invested here and there maybe everywhere and they enjoy looking on a frequent basis to see the rise in their income levels, how their assets are growing. That's what some people enjoy doing. But it becomes an addiction, doesn't it? Something like that. I'm sure it does become addictive. No, we are to enjoy the things which God gives us. And he gives us things, he, rich, he gives us richly all things to enjoy. The simple pleasures in life, for example, the simple pleasures is an expression which we sometimes use. And they are simple pleasures. Pleasures. My wife and I, we enjoy going to uh, a town not too far away from us, a town called Felixstowe, which is on the east coast of East Anglia here in the UK. And being on the coast, it has a beach. Although not all places on the coach on the coast have beaches, but Felixstowe does. And we enjoy going to Felixstowe to walk along the prom, the promenade, and, and look at the sea. We look at the ships which are coming in and going out from the port of Felixstowe. Uh, we enjoy sometimes, on occasion, sitting on the beach. <clears throat> and on occasion... Uh, not very frequently, because of the weather here in the UK, we enjoy going for a swim in the sea. These are simple pleasures. They do not cost much at all. If we were to live in Felixstowe, we might be close enough to walk to the beach. So rather than not costing much at all, it, the pleasures would be free, because we would just walk to the beach. Other examples, taking a walk in the countryside to admire the trees and, and nature. Not that we worship trees, no, not that we worship nature, but we worship the creator of the trees. We worship the creator of nature. So the simple pleasures in life are those pleasures which God richly gives us to enjoy, to enjoy. Don't let anybody say to you that God is a killjoy, that God is miserable, that God just gives a set of rules and regulations for us to keep. And he he's a stern taskmaster. Don't let anybody say that to you, because God gives us richly all things to enjoy. Then it carries on in verse 16. Let them do good. This is people who who are rich financially, yes. And there is nothing wrong per se. There is nothing wrong in itself in being wealthy. It's how one deals with that wealth. Let them do good that they may be, that they be rich in good works. 
So the, the, the focus has shifted from the riches to doing good things. So it is good to give to charitable works. It is good to give money to other people. It is good to give possessions. It's better to give than to receive, Scripture tells us in simple terms. And we, I'm sure we all know that. We can relate to that. That we get a sense of satisfaction when we give something, whether it's some money or a gift. When we give to other people, it, it actually does something for us. It improves our state of well-being. So let them do good so that they may be rich in good works, in doing good things. They may be plentiful, have a, have a richness in giving. Ready to give, willing to share. Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come so that they may lay hold on eternal life. I've been reading from the New King James Bible, but I want to turn for a moment to the New International Version, the NIV, because it says in verse 19, which I've just read from the New King James, it says in the NIV, in this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. True life. The life which is truly life, which is eternal life. Now, eternal life does not begin for us as Christians when we pass away, when we die, when we leave this earth. It continues when we leave this earth. But eternal life, this life that is truly life, which the NIV uh, gives that expression, it begins when we become Christians. Now, we know, don't we? Nobody is born a Christian. Nobody becomes a Christian when they're months old, when a certain practice is uh, done with them and over them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nobody comes a Christ, becomes a Christian at the age of one or, or two because they are too young to understand their sinfulness and they are too young to repent of that sinfulness they are too young to understand the ways of God. But at a certain age, the age of understanding, whatever that might be, it might well be for someone who is under 10, that they, they, are under, they understand that they are sinful. There are areas of their lives which are really not good at all. And they understand the ways of God and how to come to God through Jesus it can happen at an age under 10, but more frequently it happens at an older age. Happened for me when I was in my mid-30s. Happens for people at different ages. But whenever it is that we become a Christian, we become born again, we have God living in us, the Spirit of God indwelling us. At that age, that's when eternal life starts. That's when we begin the life that is truly life, as it says here in the NIV. The NIV translation not being my favourite by any means, but it, it, this particular phrase, I think, sums it up well. This is truly life. And whether somebody is rich financially or poor financially, whether they are, whether they are living in plenty or whether they are living in poverty, this eternal life is what our God wants to give to people. So God loves rich people. That's the title I've given this message. It may have drawn you into watching it, thinking, well, what are you talking about here, Charlie? Surely you can't mean what you have said in the title? Well, yes, I do, because God loves rich people, but he doesn't want rich people to concentrate on their riches. He wants them to be rich in the living God. He wants them to trust in the living God. He wants them to be rich in good works. So being rich, okay, some people are rich, but that's not the be all and end all, as we say. That's not the point. It's how we look at our riches, 
what we do with them. But more importantly, we are to take hold of the life that is truly life. And this life is available to all who will understand their sinfulness, their wrongdoing, their wrong thinking, their wrong attitudes. And they want to change. They want to repent. They want to change direction, to come to God. But of course, we can only come to the living God through Jesus. And that's why he died on the cross, to take the consequences of our sinfulness and the consequences of our sinfulness are a, are a punishment. And he took that when he was crucified, when he gave himself up to be sacrificed on that cross at Calvary, to be crucified, to take the beating, the punishment, the agony which we truly deserve because of our wrong status before God, our, our wrongdoing before God, our sin before God. But once we understand this and we want to come to God through Jesus, understanding that he died to open the way to heaven. And that's the only way we can get into heaven when we leave this earth is trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus, in the merits of what he did. Heaven's door is then open to us. And that's wonderful. So God loves rich people. God loves poor people. God loves everyone. And this offer of salvation, this offer of entering into a life that is truly life, is absolutely 100% open to everyone. And that, that includes you if you are watching this video and you have not yet entered into this eternal life, the life that God wants to give you. Please consider the gospel message, the good news. Consider what I have said today. Consider the ways of God. Consider yourself and how you are not in a relationship with God yet. But if you want to be, absolutely. Come before God and ask for his forgiveness. Apologise for your sinfulness. Apologise that you have been acting in a way that displeases God. Say that you trust in what Jesus did for you that he allowed himself to be punished, took your punishment on the cross at Calvary and ask God to forgive you and say, Lord, I want this eternal life. I want to live the life that is truly life. I want to be born again by your Holy Spirit.